Hello, my brothers and sisters, and thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We are going to be in Revelation chapter 6, and we are going to look at the events that are unfolding from Jesus having opened the scroll. He broke the seals. He earned the right. He came to the earth. He paid for redemption. He rose victoriously over death, and so he alone has the authority to open this scroll. And so when he does, we are uh, here to learn what happens uh, at the end of time. And so right away, you will see these four horses of the apocalypse show up. There is a white horse. That is, uh, there's going to be a rider on there who is said to conquer. He has a bow. He doesn't have any arrows, so he doesn't conquer by warfare. But he does, in fact, conquer. The second rider comes on a red horse, and a great sword has been given to him, and he uses it to take peace from the earth. The third horse is the black horse, and the rider on that has a pair of scales, and that represents that there is famine in the land due to the consequences of the pestilences, due to the consequences of war. The commodities, the uh, barley, the wheat, the goods, just to uh, live, the things we need just to get by, the cost of them is going to skyrocket so that it will take a full day's pay just to buy a small meal. And of course, the fourth horse is the pale horse and the rider is death. And it says that the, a quarter of the earth is going to be affected by this. And so it actually adds that the wild animals are going to get in on this and they will also contribute to human death. So these four seals, the first four seals that are opened, these four riders, there will be great consequences to the earth. And if you remember Matthew chapter 24, there is a lot of parallel between what Jesus said in that chapter and what John is writing here. In fact, my friend Alan Kirshner, who is a well-known pre-wrath author, and speaker. He's got a, a great writing ministry on his uh, website, alankirshner.com. He's got an, an active blog, and I would encourage you to go there and uh, check out some of his resources. He has been doing this for a while. Uh, he's got a great chart that shows the comparisons between Matthew 24 and Revelation chapter 6, so you can see a little more detail than what I'm doing in my video. But I would highly recommend the information that he puts out is very good, godly man who really cares about uh, people's spiritual health. And part of that is an accurate understanding of biblical prophecy. But I also wanted to talk about the fifth seal. So I'm going to read that one. It says, when he opened the fifth seal, this is Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered because of the word of God and the testimony they had given. They cried out with a loud voice, Lord, the one who is holy and true, how long until you judge those who live on the earth and avenge our blood? So they were each given a white robe and they were told to rest a little while longer until the number would be completed of their fellow servants and their brothers and sisters who were going to be killed just as they had been. Friends, I want to point out something here in Revelation chapter 6. Note that the first four seals were opened and these writers affected great havoc on the earth. And these four writers parallel the events in Matthew chapter 24. Jesus warned in Matthew 24 that there would be a time of great tribulation or great distress that would come upon the world. And it would come against the Christian. And here in the fifth seal, the Christians who have died and are now in the presence of the Lord are asking God, how much longer until you judge them for having killed your servants? Friends, 
God's wrath has not yet been poured out against the world. That's what they're saying. They're asking God, how much longer are you going to wait? See, this fits the pre-wrath understanding of Matthew 24, that God does not pour out his wrath until after the sun goes dark, the moon turns to blood, and the stars fall from the sky, and you have those cosmic cataclysmic events. In fact, let's look at the next seal. The sixth seal says, Then I saw him open the sixth seal. A violent earthquake occurred. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of hair. The entire moon became like blood. The stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its unripe figs when shaken by a high wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the nobles, the generals, the rich, the powerful, and every slave and free person hid in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and the, to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, because the great day of their wrath has come. And who is able to stand? In the sixth seal, you have that cosmic cataclysm and the people on the earth running for their lives because God's wrath is finally about to come. My friends, what we learn from this, the great tribulation and the birth pains that we saw in Matthew 24 do not equal the wrath of God. The day of the Lord begins with this cosmic cataclysm. That is the sign that it's about to begin. And once that happens, you will have the wrath of God poured out. Until then, God has not yet poured out his wrath. And so John writes a parallel of sort to what Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote in their Gospels. And we will soon look at, more specifically, what is the day of the Lord. But until then, thank you, my friends.